This is what remains of a section of one of Nairobi's largest markets. More than 200 traders shared this space, mostly selling timber, furniture and clothes. The fire started early morning when the market was closed. People living nearby were asleep. Many, including children, were overcome by smoke and fumes and suffocated. Others were rushed to hospital. Samuel Ndongo was at home when he had the market was on fire. He had a business here and lost most of his stock. I was called at around 2 a.m. and told there's a fire. I rushed here. I still have my pajamas on. When I got here, all my timber was on fire. It was worth about $10,000. By early afternoon, investigators were still collecting evidence to find out what started the fire. And rescue workers were cutting open shop doors to make sure no one had been trapped inside. All the people who died of suffocation lived in these buildings. Many others are still in hospital. Some residents and traders we spoke to said that the fire was caused by an electrical fault, but police are still investigating. This may be the worst tragedy in Gikomba market in recent years, but it's certainly not the first. There have been at least seven serious incidents in the last seven years. Some are blamed on arson because of business rivalry, but most are said to be accidental. I can't say what the problem is, but the market is too congested and narrow. It makes it difficult to contain fires. We also sell highly flammable goods like mattresses, timber and clothes, so fire spreads very quickly. We need at least a water hydrant here. It's a busy market where tens of thousands of people trade every day. So as those who lost friends and family in the fire and property ponder their next move just a block away, it's business as usual. Catherine Soy, Al Jazeera, Nairobi.